Could Australia's obsession with so-called wellness actually be causing us harm? It's estimated a third of the population regularly takes vitamins, supplements or herbal medicines. The complementary medicines industry is worth more than $5 billion a year and it thrives on our belief that these products are natural and healthy. But there are Australian scientists and doctors who warn that not only are many of the alternative products a waste of money, but some might also be deadly. The booming business of wellness Can hold that? is crammed full of characters. I just spent my morning at the beach, I just went for a swim and I found my yoga at the beach. YouTubers, Instagrammers, celebrities, fitness bloggers, Fitbit fanatics, all luring us to spend money on herbal and dietary supplements. Hey guys, just a reminder how easy it is to be healthy. But what many of us don't realise is that a number of those herbs that offer so much goodness can also be very dangerous. I was told that I was going into liver failure and um, that they were going to talk to the transplant team. The transplant team? Yes. I actually asked, was I going to die? And he said, there's 50-50. Meryl Gemmell was rushed to a Brisbane hospital from her home in northern New South Wales. For 18 months, she'd been taking Valerian, a natural non-prescription supplement to help her sleep. What made you think you needed Valerian? You think herbal, healthy, it's a natural product. And Valerian's from a uh, the root of the valerian plant and I just thought being plant-based it would be healthier for me. Yes. I was worried about that, that was a real concern too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brisbane liver transplant surgeon Dr Paul Clark found that one in three of Merrill's liver cells had died. They were yellow and jaundiced. He then had to try and find out why. I remember you being really frightened. And... She was very sick indeed and uh, when anyone comes in with an acute liver injury like that, we have a, a set protocol we work through. And we have to look at all the medications. There was no other culprit medications that she's had. We, we, we know that there's some there's data that suggests that valerian can cause liver injury. And uh, in that setting, and no other candidates that we could implicate, in my opinion, it's the most likely cause for injury. Meryl was lucky enough to survive without a transplant. But every year, medical records show up to a dozen Australians receive liver transplants because of acute reactions to a variety of herbs. It worries me that we have uh, sort of these time bombs out there ticking that people feel these things are, are harmless when these agents are out these drugs and these medications and supplements are all sort of uh, marketed so benignly. Uh, and uh, I think patients' perceptions of these drugs aren't as drugs. They don't think that they are drugs. They think that these are really going to do them no harm. Merrill isn't a one-off case, is she? No. You see We this. commonly see people on uh, herbal medications who come in with liver failure and liver injury. It's very unfortunate that anyone has a bad reaction to any medicine, but I think the thing that we find very difficult to understand is, in fact, the link. Dr Leslie Braun is a pharmacist heading research at Blackmores. It's devastating. It's, it's terrible. It's the last thing that we want. Dr Braun says Blackmores has been selling valerian since 2006 and this is the first adverse reaction. However, scientific papers from around the world do show multiple reports of liver injury associated with valerian. 
You're a pharmacologist or a pharmacist. You've read these papers, haven't you? Because I've read them. The one thing that I keep coming back to is that when you do look at clinical trials under control conditions, they are not picking up any serious adverse event to valerian. You'd have to say it's incredibly safe. It is so, true so to you say... Do, you, you are absolutely blanket. Valerian is 100% safe and no customer has any reason to believe that they could potentially suffer mm. liver damage. Mm. Are you with, saying that? With 80 million doses sold in zero case reports, if in fact this case is shown to be linked to our valerian, it would be the first case in 80 million doses. The first case in the world? Is that what you're saying? To a Blackmore's product with valerian no, no. it would be. Well, let's talk about valerian generally. Yes. Are you saying you've never heard mm. of valerian being implicated in mm. cases of liver damage. There's been two cases worldwide from what we so can see in the medical issue, but, but there has not been to any Blackmore's product. Professor Skerritt, nice to meet uh -oh, you. Let's walk on. Dr John nice Skerritt, head of the government's Therapeutic Goods Administration, the TGA, says at this point his agency won't be taking action. Sadly, whether it's genetics or something that we haven't yet discovered, you will have the one in a million people who, uh, who may react to a product. So uh, this woman was just unlucky, was she? It could be, or it could be other medicines, or it could be genetics, or it could be some rare enzyme. Well, the liver transplant surgeon taking care of her described these products as ticking time bombs. Would you disagree with that? No, I, I would disagree, because I'd state that uh, we carefully review every ingredient that's permitted for use. And there are other herbal compounds that concern doctors. Oh, look. I don't think I've seen baby ones, not that small. Matthew Whitby and his partner Kiara believed there was absolutely no risk when Matthew bought a herbal product back in 2014. This is the liver transplant. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it all there. Scarring. Um, yes, I would think that um, every day, whether you like it or not, you have a reminder of that protein shake. Yeah, yep, definitely. Matthew wanted to lose weight he found a product called Hydroxyburn Elite, a protein shake sold online by a Queensland company. It contained green tea extract. But after drinking just five protein shakes, he became very ill. He was shocked when doctors told him he needed a liver transplant. They said I had you know, two weeks tops uh, to live. What did they say to you about the green tea? Oh, um, yeah, they said, yeah, green tea was the most probable cause, according to the test that they've done. These are the cells after the green these tea. Are, these tea are the cells that have been incubated with the green tea. We're trying to replicate what's happening in the, in the body in a pl plastic dish. Pharmacologist Dr Ian Musgrave and a team at Adelaide University have put green tea extract under the microscope. They fed live liver cells with the extract. And within 48 hours, the liver cells began to die. Transform from being healthy and flat to small and shriveled. See how these are all scrunched up and small? Mm. We have a saying in toxicology, it's the dose that makes the poison. So if you're drinking a couple of cups of green tea, um, that's perfectly OK. But people are taking supplements with high concentrations of these green tea extracts, which will expose you to the chemicals uh, from green tea at much higher concentrations than you would normally, and which exposes them to toxicity. Green tea extract, do you mm. believe it can cause serious mm. harm? Mm. I haven't actually looked at the analysis and the reports, but I understand the TGA has been getting a series of reports, and there seems to be something going on there. Blackmores, like many other brands, also have products containing green tea. 
And if required, they say, they'll comply with any government directives regarding product warnings. One thing that we urge everybody is if in fact they do suspect a serious reaction to anything, whether it's a pharmaceutical, an over-the-counter medicine or a herbal medicine, they should really report that to their healthcare professional because we're learning all the time. It is a touch of Russian roulette on that shelf mm. there. There is a risk every time Not I pick up a bottle that, that I might be the one mm. that that mm. product doesn't like. Products made and regulated by the TGA and produced under good manufacturing practice are incredibly low risk. Out on the fringes of the supplement industry are Chinese herbal medicines. This is where things can get really scary. A team of university researchers went to several Adelaide stores and bought a random sample of herbal compounds. We were on a fishing expedition, we had no idea, because nobody does. And then we discovered this and we thought, that can't be true. Back in the lab, they screened 18 herbal remedies. A world-first study led by Dr Musgrave and forensic pathologist Dr Roger Bayard. The reason I got interested is because we had two deaths involving these substances. What did you find? Over 90% of them um, had something wrong with them. Contaminants, like um, there were heavy metals, like arsenic. Animal products. We had rats, cats, dogs, um, the snow leopard. Snow leopard? That was dreadful. And, and you also found a, a adulteration of a significant kind. Del uh, adulteration is the deliberate addition of pharmaceutical agents. The list was quite extraordinary. I mean, there was ephedrine, antibiotics, stimulants, antihistamines, warfarin, steroids, as you say. Mm -hmm. Steroids. These, these are in so-called natural medicines. Yeah. So yeah. somebody's cheating here. Yes. It's quite clear that there was pharmaceutically relevant concentrations, so they must have been externally added. Doctors point out that some mainstream supplements can be vital, such as folic acid and iodine during pregnancy, the sunshine supplement, vitamin D, and some others for people with diagnosed deficiencies. But everyone agrees that the best way to achieve good health isn't from a capsule, but with a diet of good fresh food. You don't need vitamins when you've got all of this around you. It's extraordinary as you go into pharmacies and you see this array of material that you can buy. Um, and where's the evidence for it? And you know, people just, just pouring money into these companies and not getting much out of it. So what is the answer here? What do we need to do? We need to treat herbal medicines like other medicines. I, I think that we need some way of making the manufacturers prove that these substances are okay. And that Put the onus on them. I think so. That's they're, their product? They're the ones making the money. Prove it. Yeah. That's what happens with drug companies. Why not with uh, herbal companies? Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.